Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Before I get started on uh, part two of Nero Diavola, which is a very um, famous, the, the workhorse of Sicily, I'd like to explain, um, uh, first of all I'd like to apologize, I tried to load up my video for uh, Blue Friday with the Seahawks, I was wearing my Seahawks shirt and there were some problems with the internet at my house, I couldn't load it up, I got home, I found out it was not able to load. So uh, I'm going to put that out today, which is Monday, this will be up tomorrow, which is Tuesday. So I apologize about that only because it sounds kind of confusing when I have the Blue Friday thing. But, um, you know, it's the way it happens sometimes. You just, you know, you can't control the internet, you can't control where, you know, usually what happens is I load it at home, I go to work, once it's loaded up, I can at work, you know, do what I have to do on my break to get the video ready to uh, sail out to, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> to get out there to you guys so you can watch it. So part one of Nero Diavola will, was filmed on Friday, will be out on Monday, this will be out tomorrow, hopefully if everything goes right. Secondly, I got an, um, a comment on one of my videos that I did about Sunday Wines, of episode 190, and uh, it was an interesting comment, uh, it said, obviously a fan of Wine Library TV. And if all of you remember when my early videos, and uh, sorry Barry for bringing this up again, because Barry, my close friend and psychologist, not my psychologist, he is a psychologist, uh, Barry told me not to mention Gary again. Well, I'm going to do it one more time because I need to explain something. I interviewed Gary Vaynerchuk a couple of years ago, and I asked him if somebody could do a video, uh, a wine video like his. He had retired from Wine Library TV. He was on to VaynerMedia doing other things. And he said, I think they could. I, I really do think they could. I think it's, um, they couldn't be as ridiculous as I am, which I agree. He's from Jersey. He's a fast talker. I'm not. But I took that as a um, hint or license to go ahead and try to do one in the same format. And I don't claim to be Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't want to be Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't have the same aspirations as Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm obviously not a New York Jets fan. When I first started these videos, I was using a black bucket. Then I thought, you know what? I'm a, a huge Seahawk fan. Um, I, I, I did have an episode where I admitted for a while I kind of got away from that only because of the head coach. But, I'm, you know, I mean, it's just something that I've decided that you know, no matter what the Seahawks do, win or lose, I'm behind them. I always have been since I was a little kid. Since, well, since uh, I was in middle school when they started as a team, an expansion team. Um, I often, I, I, I kind of liken this whole thing to uh, uh, talk shows. Nobody accuses a talk show host of just doing something that other people are doing. And a lot of talk shows are very basically the same format. They sit, they have a little spiel at the beginning, they have guests on, and it's the personality that drives the talk show. And I think in, in a wine um, video, it's the same thing. Either you like Gary Vaynerchuk or you don't, either you like me or you don't. Uh, that's just the way it rolls. And the one thing that uh, Gary V and I had have in common, or had in common, and maybe we still do, is we both have retail palettes. He worked in a wine library, which is a big wine shop in New Jersey. I work in a wine department, a grocery store, a very big wine department. Uh, we we're very successful. And um, we both have a understanding of what the majority of people either like or dislike. And that is something that what, perhaps he's lost a little bit of because he's now doing the Ask Gary V show. He's not as involved in wine as he used to be, although I think he could easily step in and do it again. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I have to sell wine to you. And because of that, I've developed a retail-sensitive palette. And I think that helps when I'm doing these programs because, you know, I understand what you, most of you, not all of you, of course, but most of you like or dislike. And I think that's an advantage to you when you're watching this program is, can I trust his palette? Well, it is my palette, but my palette also has morphed into many other palettes. And um, 
I think we should all be true to our palate. I've said that many times. And you have to understand what you like and dislike. And as soon as you understand my angle and what I'm tasting and what I'm doing, you will be more informed as to your purchases. And if you ask any of my homies, any of you locals here, and if you want to make a comment, please do. If you're watching this, Mike, um, all my guys that have known me for years, let people know in the comments that I've always been a guy that has searched hard to find the best bang for the buck, the best wine for the money, whether it be a $50 wine, a $10 wine, a $15 wine. That's what I thrive on is finding the best wine for the person that walks in the store and finding a good wine. I, if, if I'm guilty of anything, it's selling down. Um, because somebody says, well, I want to spend $40, I'll find them a good $30 bottle. Um, so that's where I am. And I remember when uh, my good friend Ted said, Stan, you got to watch this Gary guy on Wine Library TV. The reason Ted said that, and Ted, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is because he felt that Gary was very, had really taken up what I was already doing, but he did it on video. And so I thought that was um, interesting. I watched him, I said, you know, this guy talks like I do. He describes wine the way I have always described wine. And so I watched him, I enjoyed it, and now that he's left, I took over in a slot that I think was left open to take. And so here I am. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm getting some traction on YouTube. I'd really appreciate more subscribers, of course. That's a cool thing because you guys, when you subscribe, you don't have to watch every video, but it does tell you when the next one is coming out so that you don't miss any if you want or have the time to watch. All right, I spoke my piece. <coughs> and I want to thank the dude for commenting on the Sandy wine. And I got a couple of thumbs down, which I thought was cool. It's, uh, I think it's the first time that's happened. But I also dished on the Pinot Noir from Sandy, so that could have been the reason for that. But, you know, I call it like it is. So let's get into part two of Nero de Avila. If you remember the last episode, or the one you're going to watch hopefully today, <laughs> how confusing is that? Um, I was disappointed in a couple of the wines. Um, Nero de Avila is the grape of Avila, the workhorse of Sicily. It is like Sangiovese in Tuscany, Nebbiolo in northern Italy, uh, Pinot Grigio in Northern Italy, if you want to go there, uh, Zinfandel in California, it is the workhorse, and it means, it's basically from the town of Avila, which is southeast in Sicily, the island of Sicily, and it means the dark of Avila, or the black of Avila, uh, because it's a very dark skinned grape, it was used in blending a, for a long time, until it became a, a varietal that a lot of uh, wineries did. So the first one we're going to do is the Abazia Santa Nesta Anastasia Nero Diavola, uh, Terra Siciliani, so it doesn't have a specific appellation inside of uh, Sicily, 2012, and this rolls in at $14. There you go. Just another one, quick one, that, that an advantage that Gary had that I don't have is he had an entourage of people from the store, Wine Library, that he was able to use to film, to set up the stage. So he just walked in, plopped down, did his thing. Um, so that's not something, this is all self-published. This is, I do this all on my own. Sometimes my son helps me. Sometimes I have uh, guys help me when I'm interviewing somebody. But both, basically, in my house, in this new setting, I just set up everything. Sometimes I forget the mic. Sometimes I forget to give my prediction like I did with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, one thing I'm not is a fast talker. And so, you know, everything I'm going to do is a little bit uh, paced at a slower pace. I hope you can deal with that. All right. Let's see what we get on the nose. A lot of cherries right off the bat. And rose petal. I love it. Rose petal and cherries. There's an interesting little bit of cola coming through. Splash some of the wine on the rim. Pretty much it. Um, very, per actually a little bit perfumed on the nose. It it's pops out a little bit. Let's see what we get on the palate.
Uh, this is a very, very good example of Nero Diavola for the 85 percenters. These are the guys, I think 85% of you that try this are going to like it. It has a nice dark cherry and currant fruit. Has a little bit of minerality coming through. It's got a nice freshness underneath, which I like. It comes from the acidity. But unlike the last episode that I did on Nero Diavola, Nero Diavola this is not high acid. It has the acidity well integrated into the dark fruits. I get a little bark element coming through on the back of the mid palate. A little bit of licorice too, which is always a cool thing. Don't think like black licorice belly, jelly beans. Just think of that natural licorice, that kind of uh, licorice essence that comes through. So when we say licorice, we don't mean you're going to get that high um, candied licorice, more like anise licorice coming through. A little bit of tobacco. In the finish, I get nice red flowers, which is always a cool thing. I love red flowers. If you, I'm a sucker for red flowers, especially when it comes to European wines. I really like it when you get a little bit of it in New World wines, too. It has a little bit of earth. A little bit of minerals coming through. I get a little bit of um, baked earth, rocks, not a lot of it, just subtly. It's well integrated. I mean, it's 14 bucks. It's a great buy. So this is the uh, Abazia Santa Anastasia. Um, I think that's an A. Or Natasha. I think it's Anastasia. It's got to be an A. What do you think? These are very unfamiliar with me. I've never, I've never tried any of these. So, I think it's Anastasia. Maybe if I looked on the back, I'd get it. Santa Anastasia, yes. Okay, very cool. I'm going to go B plus on that. I think it's a very good example. It's a great price. Um, there's, no, there, it's well integrated. Good acid. Good food wine. Be great pizza, hamburger, um, lasagna uh, wine. I like it a lot. I'm going to go B+. Plus. Let's move on. Uh, Morgante, Nero di Avila, 2012, Vendemia, Sicily, Sicilia. This rolls in at $19. By the way, just a shout out to all of my vendors and that make sure that I get wines to do on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Um, sometimes I draw from my seller if I need to fill out a lineup, but not very often. Uh, these guys do a great job of uh, getting me wine, getting wines in front of me that they'd like me to review on YouTube. And um, I really appreciate it. This show would not be possible without that. And also uh, the PR companies that send me samples in the mail from wineries. I really appreciate that. Also, it just makes this possible, and I know a lot of uh, guys that do these some wine shows out there. They have to buy their wine, and I know that you know. I, I appreciate their dedication. I appreciate all of that, but I could not afford to buy the wines to do all these uh, episodes. So, in the position I am, where I'm a buyer, uh, that is a privilege that I have to be able to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see what we get on the nose. And this one has a little stink action, which is curious. I'm getting a little clams, like, um, you know, you just walked out. Um, now, not the actual fresh clams, but like the clam shells after they've been opened. Interesting. There's an interesting, uh, almost like a cotton candy thing coming through, which is kind of curious. There's definitely tobacco and a little bit of bark coming through. A little, a little bit of root beer also, which I find very intriguing. Let's see what we get on the palate.
very interesting. This is almost plush. This reminds me a little bit of New World wine. It's got good fruit. I mean, it's at first, when it first hit my mouth, I go, oh no, this is going to be like a gucky fruit bomb. But then it started showing some of its colors of, of uh, Old World. Had a little minerality coming through. A lot of currants. Get a little black plum, which I like a lot. A little bit of uh, blackberry coming through with those currants. And then the acid towards the end kind of, kind of sneaks in and says, okay, I'm plush. Now I'm going to be mineral. Now I'm going to be a little bit red flower. Now I'm going to go into that kind of acidic sort of mouthwatering finish. I like this one a lot, actually. What a very interesting wine. I love a wine that goes, has all these facets, like um, Sybil, you know, it has all these different personality traits. This one hits you in the front of the palate, big fruit, then all of a sudden, I mean, it doesn't take long, you start feeling that mineral coming through. You start feeling that, those red flowers sneaking in. You start feeling the acid, then it goes from that into this kind of a drier, acidic, but not acidic, I don't want to say that, drier, more um, fresh, clean, finish. Uh, so I, I think a lot of you will like this wine. I think it has a, got a lot of good aspects. I think it's a very well built Nero Diavola um, Morgante, 19 bones. I think that's a great price for this wine. You know, the, the really cool thing about this wine there's just a hint of chocolate right after you hit the mouth, you get the fruit, there's a little chocolate coming through, then the minerality, then the uh, brightness comes through. Great bottle of wine. I'm going to go A- minus on that. I think it's a very well-built Nero Diavola. I think it, uh, it could appeal to a lot of people. I think 20 bucks is a very fair price for that wine. Let's move on. This one's going to be tough. I have no idea how to say this. Fudi del Pisciato. I think it's Pisciato. Pischiotto, Nero Diavola, 2012, and this is a Versace uh, image on the front. They donate uh, the proceeds from this wine, uh, I think it said to some, to some charities, obviously, some charities. Um, uh, these uh, artists, you know, allow them to use the images on there, and this is a Versace image, 100% uh, Nero Diavola. So it's pretty cool when wineries do that. In fact, I'm going to read the back real quick. It says, uh, all of the labels in the collection were drawn by important and famous Italian stylists in order to support continued restorations and charitable works throughout Sicily. To this end, part of the proceeds from the sale of these wines will be donated to charity. Fude del Pischiotto, Pischiotto would like to thank the stylists for their generosity. Sorry about the reading, my lighting is very good behind me. Good in front, not in the back. Kind of cool, I think that's a cool story. Great color on this, by the way. You know, really dark. This rolls in at $31, so we're getting up there. Let's see what we get on the nose. So this has a deeper current nose. I, I, I'm sensing that it might be a little bit corked. But then, you know, then again, I'm not so sure on this one. If it is, it's only slightly. I'm not even positive it is. Getting a little tobacco. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I just had that initial hit was reminded me of a corked wine. It, it, it is very earthy. I mean, this has a, like, it has a currants, but it's like somebody laid a bunch of, you know, spilled a bunch of juice currants on a really, <coughs> excuse me, on a really, you know, um, uh, solid baked earth, you know, really solid earth, and it kind of all blended in. I'm getting that real earthiness to this wine. 
There's a little stink in the background, which I, you know, we all find that very interesting as wine geeks. You might think, oh, that's kind of stupid, he always says that. But actually, a lot of times that aroma that you're getting just reminds you of old world. It doesn't come through on the palate. It just comes through on the nose. Big time bark. It's like earth, currants, bark, cherries. That's what I'm getting. Let's see what we get on the palate. Wow. <laughs> That's intense. I mean, that is intense. And for those of you who, uh, I don't know what to say. It's very, very intense. I get laser solid fruit. I mean, it's not flabby. Don't get me wrong. It's not a fruit bomb, but very, very solid razor beam, laser beam fruit, like dark cherries, currants, big time, a little bit of bark action with those, the, with that fruit. Then it goes from that fruit, start showing some minerality on the mid palate, then it gets dry, a little spicy, which I like, and then it goes like leather, like old leather, old leather with a little bit of like somebody rubbed some um, rose, like wilted rose petals into that leather and a little bit of tobacco. Very, 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 very intense wine, um, very well built. This baby could age easily, well actually these two could age easily 10 years. Um, and this is the hard part, okay? This is the hard part. You're a wine buyer. You don't mind spending $31 on a good bottle of wine. But oftentimes you don't look to something like Nero Diavola because you're looking for maybe a Chianti. You're looking for maybe a, uh, well I'm not going to say Brunello or Barolo, but maybe a Barbaresco. Um, Maybe you're looking for a good uh, Super Tuscan, or you're going to Napa and you're looking for a cab, anything like that. But the last place you might look is Nero Diavola. But I'm telling you right now, this is a buy for 31 bucks. Very intense, good food wine. I think, uh, I think this is close to a 90% wine. I think 90% of you try this will really like this wine. I'm loving it. I'm going to go A. A straight up A. I think it's a great bottle of wine. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.